G'day, I'm James. About 2300 years ago, Archimedes of Syracuse actually deduced a formula for the volume of a sphere. It was driving mathematician scholars nutty at the time. Took Many people did not know, they wanted to know what is the formula of the volume of a sphere. Archimedes figured it out. The volume of a sphere of radius r is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And we know his method because he actually wrote about it and he said, okay, let's put this in a very tightly fitting, uh, snugly fitting uh, cylinder around it. And he did slices, compared slices, did all sorts of things. And in fact, he came up with a way that's very similar to calculus as we know it today. And that's the method people associate with his way of proving the volume form of the sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. But then something curious happened. About 100 years ago, in 1906, a Dutch historian by the name of Johann Ludwig Heiberg actually found an old manuscript. It was goatskin parchment, and it was basically all this ch church liturgy written all over it. But then he noticed there was actually something written underneath that. Someone had written over another manuscript. And he figured out what was underneath, and it turned out to be a copy of another treatise written by Archimedes that no one knew about. It was called A Method of Mechanical Theorems, and in that new treatise that was lost was a way that Archimedes actually deduced the volume of the sphere. In fact, it was believed to be earlier than this, the method we know today. It's probably his first way he figured out the volume of the sphere, only known in recent history. Uh, crazy. So I actually want to talk about that approach today, because it actually is a, a mechanical, mechanical result. He used the law of the lever, which he wrote about in another book uh, on the equilibrium of planes. And I talked about the law of the lever in a previous video. So how could you use balancing, balancing things on levers, to deduce the bottom of the sphere. Well, let me show you what he did. In that last manuscript, here's the approach he took. He said, okay, let's have, we have a sphere here. Our radius r, and I guess it's radius r is height r, so its whole height is 2r. Instead of putting it in a cylinder that snugly fits around it, he said, no, no, no. First of all, draw a cone that comes from the top of the sphere all the way out to twice the width. Twice the width. So this is going to be a cone with base length 2r. So that's twice the radius. All right, and so you can kind of see like, there's going to be lots of uh, right similar triangles here. There's, a, there's a, <clears throat> a right triangle, there's isosceles, R and R. So actually everything here is going to be isosceles, right triangles. Great, that's easy because it make things, makes calculations easy. And then actually draw a cone this time. Maybe I'll do it in blue, maybe hard to see, that actually has radius 2R. Do a big cone. It's not what we're used to seeing that Archimedes did. So now we've got three solids. The sphere of radius R, this big wide cone in pink, and this big extra wide cylinder in, uh, in blue. Notice the cylinder has radius 2R, and it also has height 2R, the height of the sphere. All right, so we've got three solids. And then Archimedes said, <clears throat> okay, imagine these are three different solids made of the same uniform material. So their weight actually is just in proportion to their volume. Okay, so actually instead of thinking volumes, I could think of weights. And they put them on a balance beam. He said, imagine you have a beam like this, a very light negligible beam. Let's put a fulcrum right at the middle. Let's do 2R this way, 2R this way. So a diameter width, diameter width. And he managed to prove, and it's what I want to show you today, that if you take that sphere and put that sphere here, so I'll draw smaller versions, and take that cone, put the cone also over here. Woo. So those two solids over here will balance perfectly with that blue cylinder if you put the blue cylinder lying on its side like this. Whoa. So there's the 2R. There's the 2R. I just turned it sideways, though my scale's a bit off, but hopefully it's okay. He managed to prove that these three solids balance perfectly this way. He knew the volume of this, a formula for the volume of a cylinder. He knew the volume formula for the volume of a cone. He didn't know the volume formula for the volume of, of, a, of a, a sphere. But because he knew everything balanced like this, he deduced the volume of a sphere. That's what I want to talk about today. Now, just I'm going to use you know modern sort of like graphing and algebra a little bit today. But just to make my life easier, I'm going to just work with the bottom half of everything. So I'm going to just take the hemisphere, this cone, and the top half of the cylinder. And I'm going to imagine on a set of axes where we're going to do it like this. Do, 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 do. So I'm going to actually do some modern formulas there. And voila, I'm going to show instead that half the cylinder placed at the 2R position and half the sphere placed at the 2R position, so the hemisphere there, will actually balance with half the cylinder, just the top half, going from not from zero uh, out here to 2R, out to just R. So I'll go R out. So I will prove that today using his mechanical approach. And then we'll deduce the volume of hemisphere is 2 thirds pi R cubed, from which the whole full sphere has volume 4 thirds pi R cubed. Are you ready for it? Because I am. I've got to clean the board, but here it comes. OK, so let me just be a little bit modern. Let me put this on a coordinate system. So here's his hemisphere. Here's the cone that goes all the way out to 2R and the great big cylinder out at 2R. 
So I'm going to look at this cone, this sphere, the hemisphere, and the cylinder, and compare their volumes. Now, let's assume everything's of uniform density, like made of some material that's uniformly dense. So their volumes and weights are really proportional. So the weight is based on the volume, the volume is based on the weight. So now I can think of volumes as weights, and once I've got weights, I can think of putting things on scales and balancing things. That's what Archimedes did. But he didn't actually start by balancing the actual three-dimensional solids. He said, no, no, no. Imagine I could slice all these things. Let me do some sort of horizontal slice. Come through and slice all three at once. I'll get a slice, uh, get a disc here from the cone at some height. Then I'll get a disc here from the sphere at that same height. And I'll get a disc here from the cylinder at that height. So I've got three nested discs right there. Let me imagine balancing those instead. I've got the pink disc of some small radius, I've got the green disc from the sphere of a bigger radius, and I've got the big blue disc of the cylinder of an even bigger radius. Now, I can imagine that these solids are composed of like all these discs stacked up. So maybe they have like a little, little tiny bit of thickness, in which case they really are volumes, so they have some mass weight to them, in which case, oh, they have some weight to them. Actually, their weight will be given by their areas. The area will be some, uh, some value times what that little inconceivable thickness is. That, that will basically be the weight of this object. So the weight is now proportional to the area of these disks. So maybe I can balance these disks one at a time on a lever system, which he did. This is his brilliant part. This is how he this realized these three things balance in a beautiful, beautiful way. Here goes. What way was it? All right, so, so all these discs at different heights. In fact, let's just put some uh, numbers in this. Suppose we're at height, we could either be at the very top height R all the way down to height zero. But let me actually measure how far down we come. Let me call that X. So X could be zero, that means I'm really at the top of the sphere, all the way to X being R way down to the base. So when I slide at height X, I'll get three discs. I've got to be the three base discs for X equals R, the three points, except for the big one, at X equals zero. All right, grand. So, can I now work out the size of these disks at coming down a distance x? And the answer, of course, is yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Now, the first one, the pink one, is actually kind of grand because I can see here a little right isosceles triangle. The whole thing is a big right isosceles triangle. Everything's similar. X, there must be x as well. That radius there must be x. In which case, the area of that disk is pi radius squared, pi x squared. That one is 5. And if it's got a little bit of thickness, its volume is basically that, which means its weight is basically that. All right, the weight is basically pi x squared. All right, this green one, its radius. Coming down height x, its radius will be out to there. Oh, I need to know that radius. Um, I do know the radius of the sphere from the center of the sphere out to that point where it goes out to is the radius of the sphere. That's R. So right now, let me draw, draw this on the side. I've got a radius I want to know, this one here, coming out with a hypotenuse of radius R. And if that top half there is x and the whole thing is r, this must be r minus x. So a quick Pythagorean theorem tells me this squared plus this squared equals r squared. Therefore, this must be the square root of r squared minus r minus x squared. Ugh, not very pretty. Uh, okay, let's expand this. r squared will cancel. Cross terms 2xr, yes, positive, minus x squared. This is the square root of r, uh, what, does it, what does it say? 2xr minus x squared. 2xr minus x squared. Ugh, not pretty, but that's what it is. That radius is the square root of 2xr minus x squared, which means the area is basically pi that squared, pi 2xr minus x squared. At least the square root went away. Great. So the weight of that disk is basically that formula. And find the big one. Its radius from there to there. Oh, it's the full 2R. So that's the radius 2R. Let me just draw that this way. 2R, in which case its area is pi 2R squared, 4 pi R squared. So there are the disks that get from one particular slice, and X can vary from 0 to R. Bingo, I'll get disks of those sizes. But here's the thing. Disks of those sizes, here's where Archimedes' brilliance shines. He realizes they balance beautifully on a lever. This way. What made me think of this? I don't know. It's brilliance. So take your, uh, take a lever, uh, put a fulcrum at the middle, and come out a distance 2R. Go the whole 2R distance out this way. And then put the pink disc out right at the end of that 2R position. And put the green disc right out there at that 2R position as well. Which means I've basically got this weight and this weight sitting right here. Oh, let's add those. The weight pi x squared, essentially, plus the weight pi 2r xr minus pi x squared. Oh, pi squares cancel. The weight sitting here is basically 2xr pi, or 2 pi xr, which maybe I should say it that way. Let's put all the weight of those discs sitting right there. Now the question is, where do I put the blue disc on the other side so the whole thing balances? Where do I put that? 
Well, let's work it out. We know its weight is going to be basically 4 pi r squared. And Archimedes had just done this thing called the law of the lever, that the fulcrum has to set a position that divides this length, 2r to whatever that is, in the same ratio as that weight to that weight. Uh, 4 pi r squared compared to 2 pi xr. Uh, what is that? 4 pi r squared compared to 2 pi xr. Pi's cancel, 2 cancels, r's cancel. Uh, what? Oh, that's 2r over x. Oh, so this is 2r, going out to 2r. This must be x. I want the ratio 2r over x. We must be putting this at position x. This is amazing. This is amazing. So we've just worked out, wherever you slice your, your, your three solids, you get a set of disks that have masses that basically can balance this way. Just put the two pink and green disks right there at the 2R position, out uh, how to, a sphere's diameter this way, and whatever height you've come down, just put that big disk down there at that distance. Beautiful. Because then imagine, if we kept doing this over and over again at all different heights, you'll keep putting the pink disk there, green disk there, blue disk, uh, at position X. Pink disc here, green disc here, next position X. In fact, all the blue discs will be at position zero, Z a little bit more than zero, a little bit zero, a little bit zero, a little bit zero, zero, all the way out to R. So what you're really going to is stacking all the discs right along from zero to R. X can change from zero to R. Each disc needs to be at position X. X goes from zero to R. You're smearing at all the discs and recreating this entire blue cylinder right there. Meanwhile, all the pink discs keep getting stacked up there. You're going to keep, all the pink discs keep getting stacked up here, and all the green discs keep getting stacked up here. So what you're really building up over here, out at position 2R, is the entire pink cone and the entire green hemisphere. So Archimedes just realized that actually the entire pink and blue cylinder laid sideways from 0 to R, yep, 0 to R, bring it this way, actually balances perfectly with the hemisphere and the cone at the 2R position. Whoa, whoa. Now he's set to go. Because actually, okay, okay, this is balancing this way. I can actually now use the law of the lever again to make another deduction. Here goes. Uh, clean the board, yes, clean the board. What's he going to say here? He says, well, one of his principles was that actually, given any object, it behaves physically as though all its mass was concentrated right at its center of mass. It just, as a physical system in its own right, it might as well just be a small point with all its mass concentrated at its balance point. So in a big hemisphere, a big, a big cylinder, its middle point is like the, behaving the same way if I put all the mass right there, that object is really just the same thing as the whole cylinder. Uh, of its volume sitting there. Where is that little point sitting? It's really sitting right here. Whoops, symmetrical R over 2. So we could say, ah, all the cylinder's mass is uh, behaving as though it's some great big weighty object right there. This is the cylinder. Cylinder at the half R position. Meanwhile, at this 2 R position, I've got the entire cone and the entire hemisphere. I've got the entire cone sitting here, the mass of all that cone, and I've got the mass of all that cylinder. So look at this, look at this. That's really sort of the system I've got going on here. So, okay, the law of the lever says, this ratio, 2R to R over 2, must be the same ratio as the volume of the cylinder, weight of the cylinder, volume of the cylinder, to the volume of all that stuff, weight of all that stuff. Okay, what did I just say? What did I just say? 2R to R over 2, 2R to R over 2, that is uh, 4, must be the same ratio, 2R to R over 2, the other way around. The volume slash weight of the cylinder compared to the volume of these two things together. The volume of the uh, cone plus the volume of the hemisphere. I'm just write hemi for hemisphere, that's okay. So that tells me, ah, the volume of the cylinder is 4 times the volume of the cone uh, plus the volume of the hemisphere. Whoa, and here's the beauty. We know that, Archimedes knew that. Archimedes knew that one, that's the one we was looking for. We've now got a formula. We can now do it. We can get a formula for the volume of the hemisphere. Here goes, let's do it. Volume of the cylinder. The cylinder, oh remember, remember it was R long and radius 2R. So its volume was um, pi, 4 pi R squared times R equals 4 times the volume of the cone, Fourth, uh, 1 third pi, its base was r, height was r, r squared times height r, plus the volume of the hemisphere. 4's uh, cancel. 
One whole pi r cubed equals one third pi r cubed plus something mysterious. My something mysterious must be the rest of it to get me up to pi r cubed, namely two thirds pi r cubed, in which case the volume of the full sphere is double that, four thirds pi r cubed. By using this mechanical principle of the law of the lever, Archimedes was able to deduce that the volume of the sphere must be given by that formula. Now, I wonder if he was satisfied on that, because then later on did actually derive it a different way, but maybe he was guided by knowing what the formula should be, helping him think about what to do next with that, that other approach that we know, that most people know, as what he did to get the volume of the sphere. It's beautiful stuff. You've got to say this physical intuition of the law of the lever could lead to something like this is actually mind-blowing. 2,300 years ago, Wow, I gotta love this stuff. You've got to admire mathematics. This is just beautiful beyond belief.